coverage, so don't go away. Marcellus Brown, Jean Bergeron. Bonus coverage now, six rounds. Jean Bergeron and Marcellus Brown. We're going six, and here we go. And Brown, uh, of course, uh, as you can see, quite an imposing figure. Bergeron is 6'5". That'll give you an idea. <laughs> he didn't get a chance to look up at opponents too much. And Marcellus Brown, a huge man, comes out and lands the first meaningful punch of that fight at right hand. Marcellus is 23-12-1. And, and Jean Bergeron, undefeated as a professional, 13-0. We'll let you know that Bergeron, who you see in the southpaw style, in the red trunks, is was the 1996 Olympic Games representative for Canada in the super heavyweight division. Very popular as an amateur in Canada. He was four times the Canadian national amateur champion. So it's nice to get a chance to see him down here in the United States. See what he's got to offer. So is Brown showing no fear though. No, he's not. A couple of good body shots. Bill Bergeron off of him. Actually, Marcellus Brown once fought another uh, fairly famous uh, uh, Canadian, uh, Shane Sutcliffe, who went on to win the Canadian uh, Professional Championship, the heavyweight uh, title. And he was KO'd, uh, TKO'd, actually, by Shane Sutcliffe. We'll see how Marcellus does here against the guy who's fairly inexperienced as a professional Bergeron. He's fought a, a number of uh, fairly big name uh, uh, heavyweights along the way, uh, people like uh, Derek Jefferson and Janelle Nicholson, oh, King Epi Tan. He, every time he's tried to really step up in class, he hasn't been able to uh, get the win. Here we go. This is uh, Bergeron's third fight here in the United States. Fought a couple of times in Las Vegas. Now down the road from Las Vegas here in Laughlin. Bergeron countering pretty well. Bergeron very, very much in control. He fights under control. I'm sure it's got to be very different for him, though. At 6'5", he's I'm, I, even at the heavyweights in the heavyweight division. I'm sure he's usually punching down at guys, but here he's got a guy in front of him who's seven inches taller. I mean, I wonder if he's ever fought a guy taller. Than him. That's true. Oh, work out, work out, work out of this. Good work by Bergeron and uh, some Marcellus Brown with a, you know, just a little kind of smart, a little clever <laughs> maneuver of punching his man as he backed away. Brown has, as you said, the experience edge. 36 fights coming Break in here. Step back clean, fellas. Step back. Come on, hurry though. Step back, Arms of Brown are uh, causing Bergeron some problems. Time. Here's the tail of the tape brought to you by Just for Men Hair Color, and uh, there you see the big difference. <laughs> right there and right here. 86 inch reach, Barry. That is bigger than George Foreman's reach was. A lot of George Foreman's reach, of course, was in his back, and that's not the case with Brown. He's just long arm. There's another George Foreman tactic. I'll just uh, stand up between rounds. Good right hand uppercut by Marcellus Brown. Close first round. Both guys had their moments in that third round. A lot of clean punches landed by both men. Jeff Mayweather, you see, climbing out of the ring. One of the many famed of fighting Mayweathers yes. now. I saw a whole plethora of uh, Mayweathers last night, of course. Roger Mayweather training uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Jeff Mayweather had a nice professional career himself before becoming a trainer. And Floyd Mayweather Sr. is a pro career and now training uh, Oscar De La Hoya. Rolling up the left eye of John Bergeron. Pretty good upper body movement from Bergeron at times. Managed to 
to get under that shot of Marcellus Brown. Stop, stop, stop back, fellas. Watch your heads. Watch your heads. I think it would be pretty hard to headbutt Marcellus Brown. Marcellus has been a pro for a long time. He's 34 a long ago. Eight years ago, he was knocked out by former heavyweight champ uh, Trevor Burbick. He's known as a fast starter, and he fought pretty well in the first round. Stamina, though, is the problem. We'll see if he, if this fight goes a distance, if he can hang in there. This fight is scheduled for six rounds. He's a clean puncher. He's a sharp puncher, Bergeron. Interestingly, in that Barry, though, he's had some problems. He's got Marcellus Brown has a cut on his tongue. And the mouthpiece came out. I was never in. Oh, boy. Here we go. Here we go. Time in. Let's go. And he was bleeding from the tongue. He stuck his tongue out at the referee. And, uh, Eddie Bayless then said, best you put a mouthpiece in front And he's breathing heavily, I know, just because they put that mouthpiece in, so that stamina problem that he's had. They're already be coming uh, to the floor here. But Bergeron, I mentioned, he's had some uh, problems uh, physically. He's had surgeries to repair ligament damage in both elbows. Which can't be good for his power. Really. And Marcellus Brown trying to hold on. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Let him go, let him go, let him go. Bale is taking a long look into the eyes of Marcellus Brown. It won't take a lot here, I don't believe. Uppercut. Brown trying to hold on. And he's on very weak legs right now. Took a beating. He may want to sit down this round. He's got a stool up there. Jim Mayweather takes the mouthpiece out, but he's still not going to sit. Jeff Mayweather telling him, you got to use your jab. Here comes Bergeron now. And there you see that left was basically on the side of the head. It certainly yeah, got I'm the attention fellas. of Marcellus Brown. You want to fight? Marcellus appeared to be on uh, very weak legs the rest of the round. He did. Being asked by Kenny Bayless over in the corner if he wanted to continue, he said yes. Let's go to Sean O'Grady, Sean. Yeah, guys, a lot of blood coming out of uh, the right nostril of Brown. He uh, is visibly tired, as we all know. But you were mentioning, too, the referee came over here and asked me if he wanted to continue. He wasn't really apprehensive about saying either yes or no. He kind of said, uh-huh. And I think uh, the referee read that as he wanted to go on, guys. Well, we'll see how long Kenny Bielis lets this go. I, I think he's going to watch our son's Brown closely. Brown goes down. Straight left hand putting Brown down. So he might have caught a thumb in the eye. I don't really think he wants to continue. That's it. Neither does Kenny Bayless. So Bergeron had a tough uh, first round. And then after that, took control of the fight. Well, he's definitely for Brown a... Uh, a trial horse, and at least in this case, Jean Bergeron has passed uh, the trial with the flying colors. 28 years old, though, he's going to have to make a move uh, pretty quick. He is. He took a couple of shots early. Still some work to do for him, and uh, for Marcellus Brown, another tough night. We are going to be back to the Flamingo Hotel and Casino, where we are, we are in Laughlin, Nevada. Here's uh, a look at the last fight. Jean Bergeron in the red trunks and Marcellus Brown in the black, and uh, this was near the end. Yep, that was the straight left cross. 
And down uh, went Marcellus Brown, and he didn't want any more. There's a good, sharp, clean punch. Bergeron, pretty uh, sharp puncher. He throws a lot of uh, uh, concise punches, and that uh, last finishing cross was one of them. Kenny Baylor stopped the fight. Well stopped, I thought. Let's go to Mark Barrow. We'll make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, 28 seconds of the third round. The winner by technical knockout and still undefeated, Jean Bergeron. Bergeron. So Jean Bergeron now 14 and 0 and 10 knockouts in those 14 wins. But as you said, uh, he is not uh, a youngster. And so he's going to have to be on the fast track and start to step up a little bit in the level of competition. Got to Barry because there's no recognizable names at all on his ledger. So we'll see if that doesn't improve. In the meantime, it's just another notch in the belt. We'll come back with more from Laughlin, Nevada after this.